today we're going to chat about why our photography industry has a horrific attrition rate of 85% and the keys to making sure that you end up in the top 15% of photographers who build a successful, sustainable, and profitable business doing what they love. I'm La, and I'm a boudoir photographer and business and marketing mentor helping creatives turn their passion into profits. On this channel, I share tips, tricks, and hacks to building a wildly successful and profitable photography business. Starting a photography business seems pretty simple, right? Have a passion for taking pictures, buy a camera and the necessary equipment, and start getting your name out there. Yeah, don't we wish it was that easy? Unfortunately, it's not exactly that easy. Perhaps that is why our industry has such a high attrition rate over 85%. This means that 85% of photographers who attempt to build a business and an income from their passion either fail or they quit. Only 15% actually make it past year five and build a profitable, sustainable business that gives them an income from something that they love doing. The key part to being in that 15% and building a wildly successful and profitable boudoir or portrait business or any business for that matter, is to master your skills and then to understand and implement the principles of business. This is what I find probably most creatives have a little bit of hard time with is the business side. So let me kind of break it down for you. Building a boudoir or portrait business is two parts, creative skill and business principles. Part one, let's go over some of the things in creative skill. There's your equipment. The first part of building a photography business is finding your passion, practicing, and building your skills to a professional level so that you can start charging for your expertise. This starts with buying the necessary equipment in order to do your job. So you don't need the absolute latest and greatest or a ton of equipment when first starting out. A full frame camera with a 50 millimeter 1.4 prime lens is the perfect start for a boudoir photographer. And depending on the type or other of other portraiture that you're doing, perhaps an 85 millimeter 1.4 prime or a high quality zoom lens will work. You don't need an entire huge bag of lenses. Unless you are a wedding photographer, you might need a little bit more equipment. Next, you'll need lighting equipment, unless you use natural light, which I do. Um, but once again, buy or even borrow just the bare minimum of what you need. One of the biggest mistakes that I see photographers make is spending all of their financial resources on fancy or fun equipment. Then when it comes time to invest in their business and marketing, they just don't have any funds left for it. So without customers, a business cannot exist. So without marketing, a business cannot actually exist. Uh, another part of your creative skill is portfolio. Once you have your equipment, the next step is to practice, 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 and build a really strong portfolio. There's an art to posing the female body. So if you're a boudoir photographer, you're gonna need to master how to pose the female form. And if you're a master, you can make a woman lose 10 pounds just through posing. And you can learn this art through practice and trial and error, or you can fast track it and do the 20% that yields 80% of the results, which is finding a posing workshop to attend from someone in the boudoir industry that has a similar style to yours and build a strong, powerful portfolio. This is an absolute must before you can start charging for your services. Once you've sharpened your skills and you've built a powerful portfolio, then you're ready to actually build a business and not before. I see a lot of photographers try to start charging before they've actually mastered their skills. So for the business part, I'm gonna give you the fast track version or the 20% that yields 80% of the results. So business principles. Here are the seven most important business principles and steps to building a successful boudoir or portrait business. So number one is lay a proper business foundation upon which you can build your business. You don't want to build a house on sand because it will come crashing down. You want a solid foundation. And most creatives tend to skip this step because 
it is something they aren't familiar with. It can be really overwhelming, and let's just be honest, it's really not that much fun for us right-brained creatives. But it's extremely necessary to build that strong foundation to have a sustainable and long-term business. So here are the steps to building a strong business foundation. Number one, lay a proper business foundation upon which you can build your business. You can't build a house on sand and expect it to stand the test of time. You need that strong foundation. Most creatives tend to skip this step because it's something they aren't familiar with. It can be overwhelming, and let's just be honest, it really is not that much fun for us right brain creatives but it's extremely necessary to build that strong foundation and have that business that is long-term and sustainable. So here are the steps to building a strong business foundation. Step one, creating a business plan, having clarity of where you're going and what you're trying to accomplish. Step two is outlining your why and your mission statement. This is really important. Business is tough and sometimes you really need to be able to connect with your why of why you started your business in the first place and what your mission statement is. Step three is choosing the right business and domain names. You need to make sure that people understand who you are and what you offer through your business name. Um, step four is going to be purchasing those domain names and setting up a business email and your signature. Step five is going to be creating a strong brand, something that is cohesive across all platforms that you're on and really speaks to your ideal client. Step six is going to be setting up your social media and your Google accounts <clears throat> and making sure that you have everything connected. Step seven is going to be finding a business CPA, finding someone who is an expert at businesses and can tell you things that you don't know that you don't even know you don't know. Um, step eight is going to be getting your business legal, making sure that you have licenses and sales permit, tax permits, and all the things that you need to be able to actually be in business legally. Step nine is going to be defining your business policies, making sure that you have policies in place to protect not only yourself, but also your clients. And step 10 is you're going to take those policies and create client contracts and agreements. Good contracts make good friendships. Make sure that they are there so there's clarity on what's going on. Step 11, determining timelines, how long it's going to be to do a shoot and how long it is to be to get the pictures back. Step 12, choosing a payment processor. Um, my favorite is Square. Step 13, getting business insurance, making sure you're protecting your investment and protecting your business and yourself. Step 14 is going to be identifying who your ideal client is so that your messaging is going to be connecting with that person. Step 15 is going to be determining your services and product offerings. And this comes after your ideal after figuring out who your ideal client is, because if you know who your ideal client is, then you can know what products that they're going to want. So that is how you lay your business foundation. So step number two in business principles is know exactly who your ideal client is so you understand their fears, objections, and behavioral patterns. If you aren't clear on who your ideal client is as a photographer, you will be unable to continue to the next steps in building a successful boudoir business or portrait business. Um, if any, in any business, you have to know who your ideal client is so you can understand their needs, you can understand their fears, you can understand their objections and their buying behaviors and their desires in order to be able to create an experience, create messaging, create a product or service that they want and that they will pay for and be able to create marketing as well that speaks directly to them. For photographers, our ideal clients aren't someone who drives a certain car or makes a certain income or shops at a certain store. Our ideal client is someone who values art and photography at the price range that we need to be at in order to keep doing our business. This is our ideal client. For, for boudoir photographers, you can get even more detailed. Our ideal clients are obviously women who want to celebrate themselves or give the gift of a lifetime. That's a little bit getting more in depth. Perhaps if you're a high school senior photographer, um, you can get a little bit more in depth on who your ideal client is. A tip for female portraiture is women who are moms tend to have this thing called mom guilt. They will spend money on their kids, their spouse, their friends, 
any day, but when it comes to actually spending money just on themselves, for themselves, they have extreme guilt. So if you're trying to convince them to spend 500 plus on themselves for portraits of themselves per se, like glamour, just so they can discover their beauty or feel sexy, you're gonna find that that's gonna be a very hard sale because you're conflicting with something that is very innate for them. But I have found with boudoir that a lot of women will justify doing a shoot even if they want to do it, that they'll justify it by giving it as a gift to their significant other. So this is where understanding your ideal client is really important so that you know how to speak to them and custom tailor your message and your marketing messaging and custom tailor your website as well. So really knowing that yes, they wanna do it and they wanna feel beautiful and sexy, but really what gets them in is doing it as a gift. So number three business principle is learning the formula of how to properly price your products and services for profit. You can have different business structures such as high volume, low price, or low volume, high price. Both business structures can be profitable, but you must know how to properly calculate and price yourself for profit. The most important key to this step is to calculate all your costs of doing business in addition to your per shoot costs and building pricing around your specific income needs. The biggest mistake that I see photographers doing is copying someone else's pricing structure. The problem with that is that you have no idea if that person is actually losing money in their business, which is about 80% of photographers that I've worked with, um, or they're just doing this as a fun hobby to break even, or if they just want some extra fun money um, in their, in, to take vacations versus needing it as a true income to support their family. There are photographers that are doing this as a career and as an actual income, and it's hard to tell who is doing what. So you have to create pricing that is very customized and specific to your costs and your income goals. Number four business principle is creating a website and an online presence that converts visitors into actual inquiries. The internet is one of the best ways to grow your business as it connects you with a larger and broader audience than ever before. Pre-internet, to get our artwork out there, we had to share it one-on-one -on -one or have a store or have a gallery showing. And now, not only can we share our entire portfolio locally 24 seven without having to put together a showing, but we can reach a worldwide audience any time of day. So if your goal as an artist is to just share your beautiful works of art with the world, then a beautiful website with a gallery and your contact information is perfect. But this completely changes when you're a business owner and you're trying to create an income from your passion. Your website now has very specific goals and objectives. Yes, you still wanna share your artwork, but the most important aspect of your website is now to convert visitors into actual paying clients or into actual inquiries. No longer is creativity and beauty the top priority, but instead your top priority is conversions and increasing your conversion rate. This is especially critical if you're using paid advertising to drive the right targeted traffic to your website. The higher converting your website, typically the lower your CAC or your client acquisition cost, which is what you want. The lower you can do that, the more profit that you make. So in order to create a highly converting website, you must also understand the psychology and the behavioral patterns behind how your potential and ideal clients are using the internet and websites to find information to make and make decisions or purchases. You're, if you're starting to undersee the underlying um, theme here, there's a lot of psychology that goes into business. Here's some more psychology. You have to know that you have 5.2 seconds to capture a visitor's attention when they land on your website. So your website load speed has to be fast and you have to have your above the fold really communicate who you are. You have to be hyper aware that your potential client's fears and objections are. You have to be hyper aware of what they are so that you can address them. The best way to do this is actually through testimonials. Um, another thing you have to understand is that people get distracted or interrupted every 40 seconds on their computers or mobile devices. So limiting the amount of information and having information that leads them to contacting you or inquiring is super imperative. 
Number five in business principles is building a marketing system that attracts a steady stream of your ideal clients with a high ROI or return on investment. You guys will hear me talk about this all the time. An extremely important part of your business is your customers and you need a steady stream of them to stay in business. Without customers, you can't have a business. And there are many different ways of marketing. There are many different avenues and those tend to work for different personalities. So really finding what works for you is key. I did a video on seven ways to market your photography business and I'll link that below for you if you haven't seen it yet. Um, just a quick cap, if you're social butterfly, this could be push marketing such as social media, VIP groups or networking. If you love writing, perhaps it's social media or blogging or email marketing. If you're an extroverted introvert like me, perhaps a pool marketing system where you strategically place your information in front of your ideal clients and have them coming to you is the best fit. So after you find your marketing that feels in alignment with you, this next step is extremely important. You must be using this little free marketing tool to let you know what is working and what isn't. No matter what type of marketing you're using or whether you're investing time resources, financial resources, or both into your marketing strategy. You guys will hear me say this a lot in my videos because I really want you to understand the importance of the things that I repeat. Um, and the tool that you wanna be making sure you're using with marketing in your business is tracking. Are you tracking how much time or money that you're putting into each marketing avenue and if you do multiple ones, it could be social media, blogging, paid advertising, expos, etc. Are you tracking your marketing strategy? Are you tracking that it's producing the most inquiries or better yet, actual booked clients? Are you tracking which avenues of marketing are giving you the clients who are cheap versus the clients who spend more? Where do, does most of your traffic actually come from? Is it quality traffic and actually people, you know, ideal clients, or is it not people who are that actually interested or don't ever convert into an actual paid client? If you don't know the answers to these questions, then you're really missing out. It doesn't matter if you have a thousand or thousands of visitors to your website or people in your VIP group or people on your email list. If they aren't your targeted ideal clients and your ideal market, and if they aren't converting into ideal quality inquiries, then it's really not that there, it doesn't matter. So quality over quantity. So no matter what marketing avenue you choose, you must make sure that you're tracking what is working and what isn't. So you can invest both your time and financial resources in the best places possible to get the best ROI. Number six, creating an experience and service that makes you stand out in an oversaturated market. When a client wants to hire a professional, they're seeking out the professional for their expertise. They want someone who is going to guide them through the process step by step and share with them what they need to know or do to get the desired result. This is especially important when you are specializing in boudoir photography and most women are feeling extra vulnerable and they may have never done a shoot before. So think of ways that you can ease their fears, help them feel more comfortable and truly create an amazing experience that they will never forget. Here are a few ways that I do this for my clients. Number one, I offer them a complimentary in-person consultation. So I sit down with them and go over all the details. I offer styling advice and personal shopping. I offer complimentary hair and makeup with every shoot. I offer mimosas or champagne during hair and makeup to calm their nerves. I Five, I take time during my shoots. I don't rush. Um, and I also coach them into every single pose and help them feel comfortable. Um, number seven, I compliment them often and maybe show them a sneak peek. Number eight, I offer them a cold Fiji water and chocolates at the end of their shoot. Um, I also offer in-person reveals to walk them through the ordering process and offer my expert advice. And finally, I send a thank you note or an email thanking them for trusting me with the honor of doing their shoot. And I ask for a review at the end of that. 
So number seven in your business principles are gonna be continually growing and mastering your skills and working on yourself to strengthen your mindset. This is just the continued growth. You don't reach like this point at which everything just falls into place and you never have to grow again. With an ever evolving world, you always have to keep business that is always at the top of your game. Um, you too have to be at the top of your game. So this means continually growing, mastering your skills, continuing your education, working on personal growth so that you have a strong mindset to get you through those tough times and break through any roadblocks along the way. So those are the seven principles of business. I know that was a lot of information. A lot of it I've repeated in a couple of videos, so hopefully you're starting to soak it in. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you found most helpful in the comments. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know those in the comments too. See you guys in the next video.